Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Google Digital Garage. Uh, today, we'll be doing digital marketing strategy. It's great to see we've got people here ready to learn with the Google Digital Garage. Um, as I say, throughout today, we're going to be basically breaking this presentation down into three bite sizable chunks. Uh, before we do that, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. So my name is Joe K. Muldoon. I've been working on this project now for, I think, approximately five years, possibly a little bit more. Uh, we've got Mohammed, who is with us in the chat, who is basically one of the Google Digital Garage trainers. Uh, today, he's going to be moderating today's session, sort of answering your questions, passing questions on to myself. So do feel free to say hi to him, hi to me, uh, and hi to each other as well. Uh, also, feel free to introduce potentially what your business is. What is it that you're um, here for? Why are you here? Um, hopefully, at the tail end of this, you'll walk away with more knowledge than you turned up with. Uh, throughout today's session, there's going to be three opportunities where we're going to have a break specifically so that you can ask questions about digital marketing strategy. Uh, if there's something maybe in the section that you want to raise, if there's maybe a question at the end and it's maybe got some link towards digital marketing strategy, do feel free to ask it. But it'd be great to see as many questions as possible being thrown at us today. The more questions you ask, the more you take away. If there's not as many people in today's session, essentially you're getting a potentially one to 10 ratio, potentially one to eight, one to 15. However many people are here, the best thing about today's session is the fact that it's live and it's with myself and Mohammed. So that should hopefully mean that you can take lots away. So ask more questions, you'll get more answers, get involved and feel free at the end, you can rewatch this till tomorrow at approximately 12 noon. So do feel free to get involved as the more you get involved, the more you will take away. So Throughout today's session, we're going to break it down into three bite sizable chunks, as I mentioned before. Understanding digital marketing, so what actually is it in the first place, uh, learning about digital marketing channels, and build a digital marketing plan. Throughout today's session, I would recommend making some notes. I would recommend writing some of this down. If it's got Google Docs, if you've got Word, if you've got your phone, if you've got a tablet, if you've got a piece of paper. Throughout today's session, we'll try and throw you little bits of information where we'd love you to take some notes down. So after the session, you can pad out some of that detail, which then means you're taking more than just, oh, this is great. This is quite interesting. Let me try and remember all that. So do try and take as much information down as you can throughout today's session. And remember, you can always be watch it. But do consider that if you are going to pause, make some notes, pause, make some notes, you are going to lose some of that time for questioning. So it could be worth sort of asking the questions while you're going throughout the session and at the end, rewind and go back through the information to get it all in detail. One of the major things that I like to think that Google does for people is it doesn't just help people on a one-to-many on one basis. It can also help people on a one-to-one -one basis. And this is something I essentially see as a sort of one-to-one -one consultancy for you to be able to get assistance with your brand, with your business, with even just your sort of building your knowledge around what is digital marketing, what is ads, what, what is ads, what are ads, how to use Google Maps, either how, what way. If you go to g.co forward slash UK mentoring, you have an amazing opportunity, totally free from Google for people based in the UK who have got a small business or have got a charity. And the amazing thing here is you've got an amazing opportunity to get one hour with a Google Digital Garage trainer who is trained in digital marketing, who has knowledge around this. What I would love to see, though, is people don't come to these sessions with problems, with issues that they're having with their websites. The idea with this is to expand your knowledge, to give you as much opportunity as possible to be able to take more knowledge away with you. So do feel free to um, come to these sessions with as much pushing on your project as you can, so that when you get to maybe that, um, that hurdle, when you get to that point where you're struggling to get any further, this is the point that you want to use these mentors to go, I'm not quite understanding the personas, but in the meantime, I've made some basic ads, I've done some ad copy, I've done some images and I've put it together, brilliant, but now we can take it that extra little step further. So do have a look at g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Um, before we get going, we want to understand the fundamentals of digital marketing. So we're going to go through a top level introduction and sort of give you the advantages, why you should be there, maybe why you shouldn't be there, which platform to use, what are the differences in different um, areas of digital marketing. So the first thing we're going to do is simply take a big step back and essentially go, well, what opportunities might you get from being online? There are loads of different benefits of being online to business, but actually, what are they? 
during COVID, these were literally demonstrated in abundance because all of a sudden being online meant you were available 24 seven. It meant you could try different models where beforehand you had just a restaurant. All of a sudden you were doing deliveries. All of a sudden you were making um, pizza boxes up. You could choose them online, add them to a car. People had to massively do an audible really quickly to be able to go and move to this sort of new direction. But one of the biggest opportunities you've got to think about is actually we live in a mobile world now. We live in a world where basically 80% of people in the UK buy online. I know, and as much as people may love and hate it, Amazon is now engraved into my life. I had a uh, christening the other month, or well, the other year, um, and it was my job because it was one of my friends uh, to get the present. Obviously, I totally forgot. Uh, Amazon, next day delivery with a customized name on top uh, with a little box with a christening keepsake box was delivered for £18. And I was literally over the moon because I felt like I was organized, but I organized at the last minute and got express delivery to somewhere to be able to pick it up from a box, an Amazon locker, and went to the christening. And no one ever knew that I totally forgot. So all of a sudden, just having this access to the end of your fingertips, being able to go, boom, it's covering something if it's late. Boom, it's covered something if it's customized. I don't have to go to the shops. I don't have to burn three hours looking for an individual gift. You can use searching boys' toys for one to three-year-olds. All of a sudden, it does the reducing of these things for you. So straight away, knowing that this, this is why 80% of the people buy online. And if you're not part of this people, part of the opposite end of these people, which is the shops they're buying this from, and you don't have an online presence at least, well, then these 80% of people will potentially never come across your business. 2.5 billion smartphones are in use today. Across the world, 60% of searches are done on mobile first. So why do you think this is maybe important? Why do you think we're bringing this up? So straight away, it's then starting to think about mobile first search. So approximately five or six years ago, when I was working the Google Digital Garage in Manchester, we got a cheeky nod from Google telling us that uh, Google Search Console, which is basically the uh, central point for a search engine to be able to add your website to their databases. And it looks for your website and then adds it to all of Google's databases so you can be found far more to it than that but essentially very top level and um, they told us that as of today or yesterday uh, it went from 49 from 50 50 to 49 to 51 percent of people were searching their mobile phones and now that's gone up even more so this means that you need to consider that actually is your website friendly for mobile phones have you optimized it for mobile phones as opposed to desktop depending on your industry this might not be as relevant but at the same time, if you've not at least thought of it, it means that your website could load slower, might not be actually fully accessible to someone on a mobile phone. So do have a look at this because this is an example of actually digital marketing optimized for mobile will also have to be considered. So this is just a top level, but it's just giving you that idea that if you're not online, then you're potentially not going to get found. The amount of people that are now using smartphones is only going to get bigger. So we need to consider smartphone use when it comes to our business online. So things to consider here is actually, well, let's reach more people globally. So essentially, you can expand your customer base and people from all over the world can find you online. But you need to also understand is actually people can now go and search engines and look for products or businesses from anywhere in the world. And if you can ship to them, then fair play. And this is a really good example, maybe, of how you can use some tools to help you out on this process already. So, for example, if you're a business in the UK selling trainers, I love this example just because it's the same words, but actually spits out very different results. So Google Trends, which is trends.google.com. Mohammed, if you could stick that in the chat, that'd be much appreciated. Um, is basically an amazing little tool um, to essentially give you an opportunity to understand some basic data, to understand some metrics. So what you can do is go to trends.google.com, type in two words, change the location, change the words. And if you were selling trainers in Britain and you typed in running shoes, as you can see in the past 12 months, there's the spike up and down. If you were selling in America, there's a spike up and down. Do Americans call them running shoes? Do they call them jogging shoes? Do they call them cross country, CrossFit, whatever it is. But what's really interesting about this is that you can see two different results for two different countries. A better example of this that close a bigger contrast of results is if you type in Wellingtons or Wellies, 
and then type in rain boots. I have never called wellies rain boots, but in America, that word is a much bigger word for usage. But when you're deciding, for example, well, I'm from America, I've come to the UK, maybe I'm going to open a Wellington boot store. Look at the words that you're using, because if you used rain boots, you would substantially reduce the chances of being found. And Google Trends would literally show you a stark difference in opinion of how many people use the word wellies or Wellingtons versus the word rain boots in the UK. So Google Trends is amazing for looking at this. And you'll find this trends across all sorts of data. You can add many words, you can add a few words, and you can sort of contrast that data to give you the best information so that you can work out how can I reach my global market? Maybe I need to do a few variations on some of the keywords that I'm using, or do we do a different listing? There's many different options around this. So the next thing we need to do is start to learn about our customers. Here we're trying to sort of grasp what maybe keywords they're using, how Google Trends can help you with this. But then there's additional tools that will give you a really good way of doing this. So for example, here we can see Google Analytics, we can see Facebook. Both of these are basically data-driven um, areas that give you an idea of how to improve your business decisions using data. So if you've got a website and you've got it linked to analytics, which if you haven't, please do it. It doesn't take long. And if you don't know how to do it, literally Google. How do I add Google Analytics to WordPress, to Weebly, to um, Squarespace, to Wix, whatever your website is built on? Once you've done that, leave it there for a few weeks and start looking at the data. But what's amazing is once you've got this data going and you've got your Facebook data going or either or and both, you can start to make business decisions using data. So, for example, you might think, right, I have got uh, mostly men go onto my website and I think they are 30 to 44 based on my orders. And you're like, all right, cool. Let's have a quick look at this. So, actually, we've got mostly females and they are 20 to 31. And I'm like, well, that's, I must have got it from somewhere. Let me have a look at my Facebook data. Uh, it's mostly men and they're 20 to 34. And it's like, oh, so even though you're not necessarily right or wrong, it doesn't make a big impact. What you can do with this data is now go, right, well, if it's men who are mostly that age, maybe I need to make a persona that matches that age group. Maybe I need to spend a bit of time digging into why that age group is coming on here. And the same for maybe my website. And all of a sudden, you can make decisions based on data. And data gives you a far more um, efficient and correct way of proving what you are thinking. Build a hypothesis in your head. Build ideas, build out, um, say, marketing strategies, but then compare what you're doing with the data that you've got to make sure what you're doing is correct. You can still make decisions using your gut instinct, but see is it backed up by the data that you've actually got. And this is what's amazing about it. Here you can learn about demographic information, gender, um, hobbies, interest, and all of a sudden, do these match up with how your website or how your business is attracting customers? If it does, amazing. If it doesn't, Let's start to do something different, but don't just keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. This is why you use analytics and why you use insights. And next area you need to maybe have a look into here as well is being online means people can communicate with your business easily and quickly. So here we can see we've got uh, social media, we've got Facebook, we've got Google My Business, but all of these are people writing about your business. Sometimes it can be positive. Sometimes it can be negative, but you can communicate through all of these different things. Stage one, for example, on Facebook could be just having a look in the settings on your business profile and having, if anybody leaves you a review or anybody writes something, having an auto response that thanks them. And that's great. That is a solid big tick. But the issue with that, it's a robot. It's not human. So for example, when I see reviews like the ones I can see on the screen now, if I was a business and I was looking to reply to this review, the last thing I want to do is thanks for your review, much appreciated. It's great, but actually it's not customized. It's not nice for the end user using that. If you're looking for a personal trainer, I'd highly recommend Body Transformation. If you want excellent results, great knowledge and training and nutrition and friendly and honest service, then you, you're on to a winner. So a really good reply to that rather than just be, thanks, Sam, much appreciated. Could be, thanks, Sam, for recommending um, Body Transformation. <clears throat> It's great to hear that you think that your results and the great knowledge that we deliver along with our training nutrition have created the goals that you achieve. Can't wait to see you again next week. 
But all of a sudden, you've reiterated your business name. You've reiterated some of the key things that your business is trying to get people to come into, whether it's personal training. You've used those keywords as well. But what you've got to start thinking about is that person feels like you've read that review. You've replied to that review. It's not a copy and paste. The name's in that review. So replying to this just shows people then that actually I'm communicating. I'm not just responding. The same when it comes to Twitter, the same when it comes to Facebook, responding to these people, asking them questions. Sometimes as well, when you're asking them a question, it sparks a bit of a conversation that will create a little bit of a buzz around that post. But all of a sudden, the main thing is, is you've got people talking about you and you're demonstrating customer service. So communicating and support is so much better because they can't ring you at three in the morning and complain or say this is amazing. But online, they've got a platform to be able to go, you know what? had an amazing day today with body transformation, personal training. I wouldn't mind leaving them a review because actually I've done a night shift. I'm not too tired. I'm going to leave a review. Rather than having to be there when they're there and say, oh, can I write in a book that no one reads? So all of a sudden, this digital platform means how people search for you is now using this information to help you expand your business. Because someone's going to go, personal training near me, boom. They then see the Google My Business. They see the reviews, how many stars you've got, flick through the reviews. All of a sudden, they're like, well, that's persuasive content. I'm going to come to that person. Well, what do they do on Facebook? What do they actually do? Let me have a look at a few videos of a personal training session they maybe recorded. Oh, that looks really interesting. That guy is getting pushed. He is sweating it out. All of a sudden, again, all of these different platforms just give you an amazing opportunity for people to be able to expand their knowledge and give you more opportunity to get found. So we're going to have a quick pause for any questions. Uh, at the moment, there's no additional questions, but do feel free to ask them or at least lobby your opinion. Uh, next thing I'm going to have a look at is the different digital marketing channels themselves. So when we're having a look at different channels, we have to consider, well, what are they? So first of all, we're going to go through just a quick top level overview of what these different digital marketing channels are. So search engine optimization. Some of you will have heard of this SEO. It's like the digital gold. Optimizing your website so that it shows up more often in search engine results. We've also got search engine marketing, which is essentially paying for advertising to appear in search engines. Often it comes at the top above other organic search results, which you're going to go into in a minute. We've got social media marketing, SSR, SMM, using social networks to gain traffic, attention, and reach to new people. So this is your Facebook, this is your Twitter, your targeting people. You're using your personas to build your knowledge about the business, which then means once you've built this knowledge, you can target people more accurately. Display marketing, online advertising in many different formats on many websites across the internet. So this is where you see those little pictures, the little banners, the little blocks that have got little bits of visually attractive information that might just sit there and you see it five times and the sixth time you click on it. Often they're not very um, aggressive in the targeting styles. It's very passive, but you see it. It's that little inception idea. It's in your mind. Next time I'll click on it. That's quite interesting. Oh, I know about this when someone talks about it. Email marketing, collecting and using email addresses to communicate with users. So if someone signed up, they want to keep on top of what's going on. They want up-to-date news about your business. They love what you're doing. But what's the next product that you're going to release? Boom, you get an email. I'm going to buy that. This is on pre-release. You're part of a special VIP club. But that person feels that connection with your business because of this. And then last of all, content marketing. Creating and sharing different types of content, such as blogs, videos, guides, infographics, to attract attention and drive traffic. So what is it that people are looking for? You're creating content, maybe of case studies, of blogs, of bits of information that your business is using so that other people can see this information and go, actually, I want a piece of this. This is me developing a product in the background for six weeks. Here's a little blog of its development. And you're learning as you go along. You're enveloping this information as you're going along. You're essentially learning as you're reading while also getting marketed at with this content so that hopefully further down the line, you convert into another customer or another purchase. And all of a sudden, all of these bits of information together with each other keep you in their sphere of influence. And then all of a sudden, you're buying from them regularly. You become a brand, um, a brand ambassador for them. You might write a blog about them. When someone goes, oh, sportswear, you're like, Gymshark, absolutely love it. I've got nothing but Gymshark, great clothes, really comfortable, 
couldn't recommend it enough. All of a sudden, that sphere of influence has expanded because they've delivered a great product with great customer service, with a great online portfolio of information that you can access and use, whether it be how to do workouts, which clothes to buy and why. But all of a sudden, you're getting all this information regularly. So you're digitally touching this company, which keeps them in your brain. So get started with search marketing. So we're going to go a little bit deeper into each one of these different ones. So here's an idea of how essentially different bits of search mark, search engine, search engine marketing work. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the search query. So the search query is what you type into Google. So what are the words that you're typing in? This could be any combination of words. Sometimes these words have got more intent than others. And by intent, I mean best compact travel camera, best compact camera for travel. Someone's just doing a bit of research. If someone types in Nikon D7100 DSLR camera, they've probably got a very good idea of what they're looking at. And you're further down that line of intent as well. So depending what they search could depend on how you create results for these. But the first thing you have to consider is a search query comes at the top. So what someone types in, whether that be a sentence or just a few random keywords. Next, we're going to have a look at is paid text and shopping ads. So just below this search query, you can start to see then the different results that are coming up. These don't happen overnight. These aren't particularly easy off the top of the bat to just go straight to. But you've paid for this. And we're going to go in a little bit how you go into this. And then last of all is um, the sort of organic traffic. So this is your SEO. This is where you spent time in your website. This is where it pays off. So if someone was to type best compact camera for travel, the best travel compact camera in 2018, top 10 compact cameras for travelers, best travel cameras 2018. So all of a sudden, you can start to see here from this, actually, someone's got pretty much all of those keywords in the guide because when someone's looking for a travel camera that's compact, there's only so many variations that you could put in there. But the best thing is, is that you've started to have a paid for one at the top, which has probably got, I assume, either the products you could buy directly or at least affiliate links. And then at the top, you've got all the different cameras that you can get that have been paid for to be there. But all of a sudden, you've got all this information delivered to you. How are you going to absorb this? So how can we get started with some of these basic things? We've talked about SEO. We've talked about what we said there, the last one, organic search listings. So essentially, what you need to do to this is the fundamentals. Without the fundamentals, it's going to be near impossible. Not impossible, but let's just say a lot more difficult to get onto those search results. So the first thing you'll need to do is create your website. Once you've done this, you'll have to submit your content to search engine. So you admit, submit it to search console. This then submits it to the search engine itself. And essentially what this does is scans through your website. You have to add something called a sitemap, submit a sitemap. And don't worry, just write these things down. Afterwards, how do I submit a sitemap for WordPress? There's loads of different ways of doing it. All of a sudden, once you've submitted these to your um, search console, at a near point in the future, it will scan all of your websites, sending these little bots into your websites that crawl everywhere. It will then return these results to your search console. And what's amazing about this is it doesn't just go brilliant. You're now in the database of Google. It will also monitor how you're doing on search, show you your peaks, your troughs. And hopefully, as you start adding content, you'll see this positive line going up and up and up. But additionally, it will also tell you some alerts and critical issues with your website. So maybe the text is too small. Maybe boxes are too close together. It means people can't use them. It uses sort of algorithms, its own knowledge, and I assume some decent AI somewhere as well, to basically give you feedback on your website. It's a little bit like a doctor, and it's a little bit like an assistant. It helps your website grow, but it helps you grow. But what's amazing about this is now, once you've added yourself to Search Console, once you're on the internet, you're there 24-7, sharing your new content, promoting your site offline, online. People can now get to this. They can search for it really quickly. Either your business name, the products, the area you're in, all of those things together. Now, because you spent time developing content, developing your products, making sure the title of the product is correct, making sure the description of the product has got these keywords in it, making sure if you write in blogs, you're using headers, you're using um, uh, alt text, you're calling your images actually things that make sense. So I would recommend when you're doing this, have a quick Google. Um, have a look at how do I write a blog 
SEO. And it will explain all these different nuances of things that you need to do. It should just be title, text, picture, buy this, or this is interesting, find out more. No one absorbs like that. People like snippets of information. So help Google and users understand your content. Start creating unique content. What is it you're doing differently to other people? Accurate page titles that match up with the content means that when someone lands on it, they read the title because they've got the title probably pulled through from Google. They see it and it says top 10 compact cameras for Europe. All of a sudden you click on it. The last thing you need to then say is for America or top eight or top five. Because people are like, well, the title said that and the content said that. That confuses me. So making sure that everything lines up, create good titles and snippets of information so that people can take it away. Also have a look if you use something called like on WordPress called Yoast SEO. That's a really good one because what it does is it actually has the title and then it has a snippet below and you can customize that. And if you don't customize the snippet, the danger is it just pulls out the top 120 characters, I think it is, which means it's not going to be accurate. You can customize that little snippet. But when you start using headers, tags to emphasize important text, all of a sudden you've started to develop what is known SEO correctly because you've spent the time developing titles, content, snippets, images um, across the page, which means then it's customized for each page. This shouldn't be a one tick box for all. You should have a mini tick box of different things you need to do, whether it be header one, two, and three, content, images, um, structure, snippets, and then you go, I've done, 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 done. Right, I've done the fundamentals at least for this particular page. So do start to build your own time into researching what it is to do SEO, because this is where Google will reward you for it. So things you need to do for this is run key, keyword research. So when we're doing this, we need to start consider actually, well, what are useful phrases? What are things that you could do here? So for example, just going onto Google and typing in two or three words to do with your business and seeing what additional words come up. So that's a little bit of little bit of basic keyword research. It then means you've got a bait idea of what's going on here. You could use additional tools like answer the public. Um, you could have a look at um, your search console to tell you how people have found you already. Once you start to build this information and you've got maybe titles of things that people are searching that you've not got already, use this to publish useful, high quality content. It's better to spend more time developing good quality content where you've thought of both sides of the opinion. You've maybe gone through the 10 different cameras that you're talking about. And then at the end or during it, you've got a pros and cons of each one. And then at the end, a bit of a conclusion statement. It might not be that one is the best. It might be if your biggest thing is compact, small camera, top one, two, and three. If you're looking for the highest quality images, top one, two, and three. In conclusion, this is my opinion. Hopefully this will really help you choose the camera that's right for you. But remember, it's not always which one is right for me. It's what's right for you. Hence, I give this amazing blog. But all of a sudden, that now means that you've got all those titles. You've got all that content that is driving people to your website. And it's quality content. It's answering questions that people want. And high quality content that is useful will drive traffic rather than you just saying and spraying and creating 20 blogs a week that are like, four paragraphs long with no serious thought process for what and how people are going to read it. Make your web pages search friendly as well. So using titles, using meta descriptions, both of these is how search engines generate sort of the actual results page for specific pages. So if you've not got these right in the first place, and trust me, the amount of websites I've jumped on where no one has even looked at the word metadata, has looked at the word title for the page, heading for the page, all of this is how Google pulls this information in. So make sure that your title, your metadata, even your slug for the page is all in alignment. And if you're not sure, write this down. Metadata, title, slug. Um, and one second. Uh, and snip it. So spend this time just learning what these key things are because each page should have it and each page you should spend the time doing this. When it comes to customers that are searching for your local businesses, it's slightly different. They might type in plumber near me, um, gas fitter near me, electrician near me, or uh, top rated gas fitter near me, change the filters to five and fours. But either way, you have to consider that you are now a potentially local SEO. 
So spend time with your business, getting your name in there, in the description, fill in that content on your Google My Business with useful information. All of a sudden, when you're doing this, you've now started to get so people can find you locally. If you're an electrician, electrical business, and you've just blitzed through making a business profile and you've not chosen electrician, you've not used it as part of your description of your business, you don't explain what services you offer, but then how is it ever going to link these two things, a customer and you together? A really good tip here as well is that if you do make your Google profile on Google um, business profile, when you finish this, you can go to Bing and then import that straight into Bing. So if you've not done it already, Google is not the only search engine in the world. Obviously, it's one of the better ones. Um, but you have to just consider some of these things can make little hints and tips for you. Don't do them both individually. Do one. It'll import it across. Amazing little tip there for you. But local SEO is basically how you're getting local people to find you, leaving reviews, interacting with you, asking questions, even have the question, the Q&A section, fill that in because you'll have them people seeing those answers and skipping asking those questions in the first place. Additionally, once you've got something like a Google My Business profile, you have to start considering, well, is it active? What does it mean to be active? Why does it matter if it's active? Well, if you're showing you've got regular updates, people know you're updating that business. People know that you're keeping that information up to date. A really good example of this is once I went for an afternoon tea in, it was somewhere like the lakes or Wales. And when I was there, I was like, oh, I wouldn't won't, won't, won't mind an afternoon tea. Quickly go to Google, afternoon tea near me. It was Christmas season. Saw a picture and it was an afternoon tea. It was a festive afternoon tea. It had cool little like red and green and trees and different things on top of the festive. Exactly what I was looking for. Went to it. About two years later, I returned to the same location. I thought, ooh, wouldn't mind an afternoon tea. Did the same search, but this time was put off because the same people have not updated their Google profile since I was there last. And it wasn't Christmas and I wasn't interested in a festive afternoon tea. But that was all the pictures on their Google My Business profile. So a demonstration of this shows actually keeping it up to date means people are looking for up to date information. By updating this business, the phone number, the opening times means you don't turn up and it's closed. You don't ring it up and it says this phone number is no longer active. You're not going to go to that business. You're going to move on quickly. So keeping it up to date in responding to reviews personally, good and bad reviews shows people that your business is active. By being active, it means people are going to go to it because they know that it's active. How many times is it you go ring 10 people on Google and they don't get back to you because of poor service? And you go, I don't understand what you want me to do here to get a, I don't know, to get a, uh, a plumber, to get a gas fit. I've rang 10 people. You want to be able to go, amazing. I've got a phone call, boom, ring them back. Or I've got a message, I've got an email, boom, get back to them as quick as possible. By showing your active, showing your business is live means you're going to get responses. And Google also shows the average response time is X which means then people expect a response time in that time. And when you get it, they're very happy. But a big question that a lot of people ask here is, what is search engine optimization versus search engine marketing? So why are they different? What are we looking at here? Well, search engine optimization is search listings for free. Go to Google, type something in, it's free. You spend time optimizing the keywords that people are typing in to link to your page to your headers, your titles, your content, your images, your descriptions, your text, so that people find you online and you get ranked at the top of search engines. This can take time on Google to rank on the first page and is free because you don't pay for it, but you are paying for it with time. When SEM, which is search engine marketing, you pay for to be at the top of the listing. You bid on the keywords, similar construct, and you can get onto the first page straight away. Can. Please learn how to do ads properly before you start spending serious money on them. But what we're looking at here is cost versus time. People say free, but actually the time it takes to get all this content, to develop the strategy can be a while. So sometimes it's worth you spend a bit of money so you're at the top so people can find you. And then as you start to see better search engine results, you can then reduce your budget or double down and keep time and money being pumped into it, which then means you see even better results still. But please use analytics and please use um, the ads, uh, Google ads, and look at the results so you can see and never just expect different results from the same thing. Spend time doing this. One of them you're building keywords. One of them you spend time developing the keywords. So just start to think that none of them is right and wrong, but you have to choose the one that is relevant for your business. And free does not mean free. So how can I get started with search engine marketing? Go to Google, log into Google ads. 
select search type and your um, select your campaign goal whether that be conversions, whether it be people coming to your website, whether it be sales, and basically it'll just optimize some of that campaign to give you better feedback on that particular goal. Pick the right keywords. So align your keywords with your business goals, manage match types and refine negative keywords. So essentially, what is it you're trying to sell? If you're trying to sell certain products, you want to make sure that, for example, Wellington boots, it might be that you're trying to sell wellies. You want to make sure then you're using wellies potentially in the title, Keep your feet dry during the winter, uh, warm and waterproof, perfect for your leisurely stroll. There's a perfect one for someone who's just going for walks. The perfect family Wellington boot, one for each of your family members in the same style. Now you're targeting families. Maybe you're targeting mums for Mother's Day, dads for Father's Day. The perfect Father's Day gift. The perfect boot for your dad to make sure he stays dry when walking with his kids. All of a sudden, you're aligning what you're trying to sell with the content. And then what you also want to try and do is whatever that ad is, you want to make sure that also aligns with the page that it lands on, the landing page. Because there's nothing worse than when someone has a, spent time developing great Father's Day Wellingtons, perfect to work with his family in matching styles. And then you land on the page, it's just a generic page. Another example of this was once when someone came in the garage and they said, uh, we've got uh, furniture that we're trying to sell to students. I was like, oh, brilliant. Let's have a quick look. Show me it. And he was like, student furniture, um, affordable furniture, perfect for you. The landing page just landed on the generic page for furniture. A really simple thing. Go to the filter, reduce it to less than £200. Now put that link on there. All of a sudden, we now have affordable furniture. And they were like, oh, that's a really simple one. But it, I didn't think of that. But little things mean that what you're saying align up with the landing page. And what we're trying to do here is target your personas, target what you're trying to people to buy, aligning it up with your ad and then aligning that up with the landing page so that what they're thinking is what they're searching for. What they're searching for is the action you want them to do. And even if they're landing on a blog page, making sure there is a call to action on that page or there's a button to buy. I've had it before now where someone landed on a page, didn't sell anything. We looked into it and the button was broke on the ad on the landing page that they were trying to buy from, which meant that no one could buy what the ad was trying to sell. So search engine marketing tips for success, optimize your keywords, spend time developing your list of keywords, getting rid of the ones that don't turn very well. Once you've done your ads, it will start telling you which words are firing, which words are triggering, and then you can either remove or tweak or improve. And these are your options. Boost with your ad extensions. So ad extensions are just nice little tools to be able to improve click-through rates, to improve the people engaging with that ad. So for example, if you're a plumber, you could have like emergency plumbing services now. And then you could have a call ad, ad extension and you put your phone number in it. But it then means if they need an emergency plumber now in sale in Manchester, it says call now for your emergency plumber in sale. You don't have to go into the website. You just click on that. It comes up on the phone. It rings straight away. You're improving the conversion because you don't have to go to the website, go to contact, click on the phone number and then ring up. So ad extensions are just a list of additional tools that you can use. Please Google it as well. What are Google ad extensions? Which one should be recommended to use? There's no right or wrong answer here. It's just choosing the one that's relevant for your goal. And then last of all, please connect your analytics so it all connects together. If you've done Search Console, you should be able to connect analytics fairly simply because it sort of uses a Search Console connection to prove that you own the analytics and then lets you link them all together. But let's get started with display advertising. So what is display advertising? Display advertising is these nice little images, nice little boxes, usually banners across the top, drop downs down the side, little images, little videos. But the idea of display advertising is essentially just to sort of be there, is to keep you on the radar, to keep you updated on things using video ads, maybe using banner ads. And it's just to keep you maybe looking at it. It's often on relevant pages. So what's good about display ads is that you can advertise on pages that are relevant or websites that are relevant to your product. So the customer's already there. Well, here's some more information that they might want because they're already there. So a really good way of looking at this is how do I do this? Again, you've already made a Google Ads maybe by now. So you just need to go, that's fine. I've logged into Google Ads, but this time I'm going to select display campaign. Once you've done this, you can then use your display planner. 
You can do keyword targeting. You can start to nail it down by doing demographic targeting and um, placement targeting, topic targeting, interest targeting. And basically what you're trying to do is go, right, this is what I'm selling. These are the websites I want to be on, or this is the area of interest that I want people to see me based around. And then it will start to put those ads on those sites in those banners so that people can go, right, I'm um, selling um, cooking boxes that have just got the powder. You need to buy the meat. It's a bit like Old El Paso. All of a sudden, maybe you go on food websites. Maybe you're typing in people who are interested in food, interested in cooking. And all of a sudden, it's only going to be placed, not guaranteed, by the way, but only going to be placed on websites that are relevant to you. Or you just choose the websites that have got display advertising space, which now means you're basically putting your ad, which you think people will be interested in from that website, in front of people that are already interested in what's on that website, which I hope would be food. So all of a sudden, you're choosing the right targeting. You're choosing to do display advertising. And essentially, you're using intelligent language. You're using copy that is interesting. It's trying to catch people. It's clean, simple imagery. Imagery. It's not complex. And at the bottom, a nice little compelling call to action. So it could be, get your free sample box delivered tomorrow. And it's a nice picture of some chocolate with a little box. Or get your free sample box of... Uh, chili con carne delivered to your door, cook in less than 20 minutes or cook, delivered and cooked in 20 minutes. All of a sudden people are like, well, that's a small amount of time. Let me have a quick look at that. It does say free. Oh, I'm going to leave it. I see it again though. Might just get that. And it's that sort of thing that Display Ads does. It's not designed to sell. It's not designed to grab people and say, I'm going to get this now. It's designed to sort of sit to the side, sit in the background and let people see it a few times. And then hopefully they will then convert further down the line. But the amazing thing about this is you can choose the websites. That to me is the biggest tool here because the websites are the ones that you can then research. The value of the display panel is that you can find some relevant website placements. And that's why you spend time planning it. Little tip for success, understand your customers. So once you understand them, you build out all this knowledge around their personas, websites that are going on, interest that they have, you can target, target, target more accurately. Enhance with remarketing. So if they've clicked on your ad, if they've gone through to a website, now you can target them harder, differently, using different ad types, using different ad copy on Facebook, on Google, on search engines, on display. And because you've now clicked on them, you've got that little bit of data against them, you can enhance it with remarketing because they've clearly shown an interest. And then test, optimize, test, optimize. Spend time weekly, monthly, going through your ads and improving them, changing the copy, tweaking the copy. What's the landing page could be improved? And then last of all, get started with social media. Um, not social media. Get started with social media marketing. So it generates more sales because you're getting people coming to you. Some websites only do social media marketing with videos that sell the products. Boom. It now means people see what it does. Do I want this? Yes, I do. Look at like TikTok. At the moment, it's blowing up on there. Add value to your brand because you can show different sides of your brand. You could just be doing sales. You could be showing, well, this is a product that we do. This is the solution to your problems. People then go, well, I do want to find out more about this. I'm going to like it. I'm going to take a little step further and go onto your social media page or go to that website link. But the amazing thing about social media marketing, it gives you those extra options. If you're generating more sales, you can reach new audiences. You can get new business opportunities because you can go to people that aren't just following you. You can build relationships on the network because people can directly communicate with you. Add value. People can literally talk to you and leave comments. They can build your own community by on your pages or just having people talking on that by having two-way conversation with your clients. And improving marketing helps you get noticed on search. Keep an eye on your competition because now you've got social media, you can look at your op op opposition. You can look at what other people are doing. Look into the search, uh, the um, blah, blah, blah. look into the um, digital marketing ads library. Literally type in Facebook ads library and you'll see all the other ads that are done on there. You can do this on LinkedIn. You can do this on Twitter. And it starts to build out what other people are doing. Learn from this. Again, organic social media, free. You'll spend time doing it, but you can only reach your followers. Paid, you pay for the views and action and click, but you can reach anyone. People don't have to follow you to be there. Again, identify who your audience is. Watch um, social media. 
writer for social media and strategy for social media. These will go into detail about this, about your demographic. Build a story, build a persona, build an avatar, whatever you want to call it. But this will then let you learn about who your people are. Once you know who they are, you know what influences, you know what usually they go on online. Now you can start to build ads around this information. Choose a social media platform for you. There's no correct answer for this. Depending what your brand is, depending what you're selling, you would then choose the one that matches up best. And again, posts that are engaging, regular content that is interesting. All of a sudden, using photos, videos, blogs, infographics, or live broadcasts means you're suiting the different people who are jumping on your platform for different reasons. But keeping these up to date, make it useful content, put a theme, do regular content. So that people see this regularly, so they're engaging with it. They're like, oh, I might have a look next time. There it is. Let me have a look at this in more depth. But all of a sudden, it's showing your persona for your business so that people can bounce off you, whether that be through paid advertising or SEO. It's entirely up to you. But basically, you want to make sure that you're doing it regularly, learning about your customer and matching those two things together. Set your goals so that you can see how have I improved? Could I do better? Set smart goals here as well. Don't just set goals. Understanding your audience then matches up to go, I've done well. I understand who they are. Let's push ads to these demographics. Consistency and regular updates. That then means you've got regular ads going out at regular intervals. You've updated them depending on the season, depending on things that are going on. Christmas ads, winter ad, Eid ad, whatever ads. But all of a sudden, it's consistent messaging. It's not there for one week, gone for two weeks. It's nice to get that consistent approach so people see it. And then hopefully one day, they're going to interact with it. And when they interact with it, you can retarget them. And then when they retarget them, hopefully you're going to convert them further down the line. So email um, marketing, again, it's a hard one, this one, because it can often get ignored, but it's a silly one to ignore entirely because you do get people coming through. If you create an advertising campaign using something like MailChimp, which is free, but you get limited functionality, active campaign, send with or drip, all of these are basically ways of you directly emailing them. You get nice little HTML templates. You also get this now inside Google, uh, inside Gmail as well, by the way. Bottom right-hand corner, click on templates, and then you can edit them. But what's great about this is you can build a list of relevant content. You can say, for example, um, the gender are you, what sport are you interested in, and maybe uh, even colors. But you can ask multiple questions maybe on sign up, and they get put into a bucket of marketing information, which means now they only get relevant emails. There's no point in just spraying emails out there with, this is our products this week, but I'm male who's interested in football. I don't care about netball. I don't care about rugby. I don't care about hockey. But three quarters of this email is about something I'm not interested in. So getting people to hone this down, to get relevant contact lists, segregating these contacts, now means you're basically making that person feel like a little bit like a VIP. They're like, oh, I'm getting regular updates about this. Hi, Joe. Latest stuff from our shop or latest things associated to your purchases, all of a sudden, they're like, well, this is what I'm interested in. Oh, what's new? What football boots? What's the latest Predator? What's the latest Adidas boot? What's the latest strap that goes around your back that helps with your posture? All of a sudden, it shows a personality. It shows customized emails being sent to them. Depending on how far down the rabbit hole you go, depends on how much you can do for this. But treat your users like a VIP, personalize those emails, and it keeps it useful. It keeps it as good content. So segment in your groups and lists for relevant content, like I mentioned a second ago, keep it simple. Test this with two or three devices. Make sure it works on tablet, mobile, and laptop. Please test that. Make sure, uh, measure the open and click rate to optimize campaign. So if you just got buy boots now, people probably aren't gonna do it. Latest, uh, latest, release, to improve, latest release to improve your free kick. Um, don't fall over on the, uh, the pitch again with our latest boots. Something that's a little bit going to make it fun. Something that's going to make someone click on it. All of a sudden, if you see a different in your opening rates, now you can start to go down that route rather than just going, well, I'm going to do the same thing next week and just not look at the results. You now have the option if you've got something like MailChimp. So get started with content marketing. Again, how can we do this? Doing videos that's being regularly posts, pushing it out onto your social media platforms, pushing it out onto your website and linking it to your social media platforms. Nice little videos that might be, well, what's going on with your business? Things that you're doing right now, short form content, long form content, series. 
But all of a sudden, spend some time developing what it is that the actual customer wants. Creating blogs around this, case studies around this to persuade people to come and use your business. Guides, demonstrates that you know what you're talking about. And it's not often something for nothing. You can often say, sign up to my blog and I'll send you the latest guide in digital marketing 101 for your new business. But then they've signed up to your blog, which means they're getting emails on a weekly basis, the quid pro quo there. But a lot of people will happily do that. The same with case studies. You want people to be persuaded. But you've got to think at the same time, it's a bit of short content, 300 to 500 words in a blog or a Facebook post or a tweet with an infographic or meme, whatever it's going to be. But then when people want to read more, they've got the extra little bit of information to do about this. Again, what do we always talk about in every single one of these? If you want to get started with content marketing, social media, paid ads, SEO, whatever it is, build a customer example profiles, build a demographic, build your personas. You need to target people. You need to target interest. You need to target actual indiv individuals but groups of people, not just write content. So when you're doing this, you should build three or four personas, if not more, and start to write content for the family person who's looking for a camera for a family. So it needs to be waterproof. It needs to be a good camera and it needs to automatically back up in case the kid smashes it. Add that into one of your blogs. Add that into some of your information because you're directly targeting their problem and providing them with a solution. And if you're trying to say, here's someone for who's going scuba diving, families don't generally go scuba diving. So it might be perfect camera for underwater diving, automatically backs up so you don't have to think about backing up your photos. So all you need to do is dive and take videos. Same solution. Same problem said in a bit of a different way. Create the customer journey map. So identify the steps the users take from awareness to purchase. So this means then you can start to work out how have they got here? They saw you on an ad, they've then gone to it, they then come to you, they're then reading your blog, they find it very interesting because you've put it as an ad. It comes onto content marketing, they read it, they find it really interesting, they then follow you, they get an email, and everyone's winning. But what you've got to think about here is you've got to think of these steps and awareness to get to the point of purchase and repeat that as best as you can. User generated content. So if you've got, for example, someone like GoPro, they get loads of co generated content from surfers, from firefighters. If you go GoPro and type in firefighter cat, they've got this really cute video where basically it's a cat that is on the floor after a fire has happened. But the firefighter gets an oxygen mask, puts it over its mouth. It comes back to life. Everyone's happy. It's got emotive music. They didn't make that. That was a firefighter just doing it. The same with for surfing. But if you can use this content to facilitate a customer's journey, all of a sudden, it means then you can use user-generated content. You can use content to generate business of your own. So all of a sudden, when you're looking at this, you've essentially distributing your content on the right channels. So, for example, as stories, as videos, as blogs. But then you can also use, use generated content to be able to push this even more. And all of a sudden, it shows, though, this is your problem. This is your solution. This is a user's um, journey. This is someone doing this. This is an amazing case study. But what you're demonstrating here is actually you've got people talking for you as well. So, again, content marketing tips for success. Use content to facilitate the sales process. So what is what could you do with this? Could you write a blog? Could you do a video that demonstrates multiple problems and multiple user cases for you? Using storytelling to engage with the audience. So could we literally have short form content you're posting regularly that is literally showing behind the scenes, that is showing the story of development? Distribute the content to maximize reach. So what platforms are you putting it on? What advertising ways are you doing this? Which one is optimized for your individual users? All of a sudden, You've then got better reach on one, different ones on another. You're starting to learn lessons from this. But distributing it means then you've actually got different metrics coming back. So you can use this to go, actually, this video has performed quite well on LinkedIn. It hasn't performed very well on Facebook. Well, why? Let's look into this a little bit more. Now, use this like lesson and repeat, but improve. And all of a sudden, you're now starting to measure the performance. You're now looking into it, and then you're optimizing it for next time. Is it the fact you've cut off the video? Is it the fact it's too long for Facebook? Is it the fact it's too long for TikTok? All of a sudden, you've got to look at each platform as an individual platform and optimize them. So now we've got to the crux of it. We've gone through all the fundamentals. We now need to start thinking about, well, here's the six steps to building your digital marketing plan. So one, 
What are your business goals and objectives? So, hi, I'm Max. I'm a hairdresser. My goals are to get more customers through my door, new and past customers, to make people in my area know about my business. So there's a clear objective. You want people to come through his door who are new and old customers. So examples of online objectives is it could be increase traffic to my website, increase online sales, increase social media page likes and follows, and increase online reach and awareness. So there's four amazing goals that are clear online goals, that are online objectives. What we could then do is start to go, actually, how can we align this with our business goals? So make more people aware you exist. Increase online reach and awareness. Sell more products. Increase website sales. Get found by more people, etc. Get more returning customers. Increase traffic to your website. So all of a sudden, you don't just have to have these two goals sitting alongside each other. They can perfectly match. And it now means when you start to think of your online objectives, they should align up with your business goals. So that then your business is benefiting. Your online objectives are pushing these goals, which means both of them working together means you should see some definite positive impact. So budget and resources, what's possible? I don't have a website yet as it's too much money to invest right now. Okay, it's not the end of the world. But I am, so then we've got to think, we've not got a website, but what else can we do? Well, we need to consider our audience. We've not got a website, so how could we do this? So I'm going to be targeting females in my local area. My most valuable customers are females above 30 years old. They normally have children and work part-time. Most of them use Facebook. So increase online awareness, increase social media page likes and follows. So if we target women, mums with kids, they can come to our shop and all get a haircut. And then I will service all the kids' hairs, their hair, and I'm getting more sales. I'll use Facebook because they're often on Facebook, looking at local groups, looking at um, family groups. I can then push this content to them. All of a sudden, I've got to start thinking, how can I market to these people? Well, increase online reach and awareness. Use display social media and content marketing. Increase sales, search engine marketing, SEO, email marketing. So you could send out the latest offers. You could have a page at the top of the page saying our latest offers. You could do a little bit of actual offers on search engine marketing saying, next time you come in, your kid has got a free haircut and a lunch. But that haircut for her costs £200 to get it dyed. Is it worth spending £2 on a cheeky little lunchable? Yes. So straight away, you can start to see here, it's matching up what is your goal with an actual strategy. And then all of a sudden, you can see how they all match up. And hopefully this then means you can start to use all these different channels to drive people back to you. So as a general plan, my online objectives are to reach more people in my local area, get more returning customers. I don't have a website yet as it's too much to invest. How do I use digital to help me? List your business on Google uh, My Business. Create a free website using Google My Business. Set up your Facebook page, collect reviews and post pictures of the customer's hairstyles. Use a content, using them to sell more. Use Facebook advertising to target people in your local area with an offer to attract new customers. So all of a sudden, you're making a Google My Business page, you're making a Facebook page, you're making content, you're getting traction, you're getting people liking it because of basic reviews. Then you're using it to post to the local area to then get people to come to your shop who are new. And then hopefully they'll come back. A simple process that has been done many times. But how will you know if you've succeeded? Essentially, you'll then measure them. So increase sales, online sales. So increase online sales by 20% within three months. After three months, if you've not increased online sales, do something different. Revisit this whole process. To increase brand awareness, to increase brand awareness on Facebook by growing an audience with new people by 40% within a time frame. Making it a smart goal now means you know how to do this. Straight away, this is how he's going to do it. This is a top level of his... Um, digital marketing strategy. So when you finished, pause this, go back to this, write this down for what you're going to do. Go through each of these stages. And it might just mean increase bookings from the past customers by 20% in the last quarter, in the next quarter. Straight away, you'll then know in the next quarter, have you achieved this? Analytics will tell you how many people are new customers, returning customers, how many of them are booked on. It will tell you this information if you set it up correctly. So one, business goals and objectives. Two, um, uh, one second. 
Um, two, it then means you've got literally all of this information for you to be able to take away with you. Um, budget and resources, audience, decide what channels, plan your activity and measure. Hopefully, this has gone through pretty much all of what you want to take away today. Um, there's not been any questions yet. Uh, which hopefully means that they've been answered by Mohammed in the chat. Hopefully, you've all really enjoyed today's presentation. Hopefully, you've taken away a lot from that. Remember, if you can do, you can always sign up to our one-to-one -one mentorings at g.co forward slash UK mentorings. But thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mohammed, for answering all the questions in the chat. Hopefully, you've all had a good time. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the Google Digital Garage. Thank you very much, and have a good day, all.